Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good af good morning, California. Welcome. You're early. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome all. I invite you to share. Welcome. As you join, go ahead and share. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you here today. May the Lord show you his, yes, his mighty strong hand. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Welcome as you join. Go ahead and share. As you join, go ahead and share. Share this message. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He is a faithful God. We serve a faithful God. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure it throughout the generation. Go ahead and share this message. Welcome to breakfast. Welcome to Monday. Welcome to Revival Monday. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. It is well. It is well in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well. Somebody go ahead and share this message. Welcome. Florida. Good morning, Boynton Beach. Welcome, 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 welcome. My God. Go ahead and share as you join. London is in the house. Oh, <laughs> yes, welcome, Jesus. I'm just here with a quick message to encourage someone to stay in the faith. It doesn't matter what, what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Whatever God has for you, no one can take it. Whatever God has for you, no one can take it. None. Whatever belongs to you, God will never give it to someone else. Whatever, Mr. Dealey, whatever belongs to you, God will never give it to your neighbor. So if the postman is in your neighborhood it means that you are next in line for your blessing amen glory to god i am not feeling 100 but i'm here because this is how i get my strength for the last couple of days i've been down i've been sick i call it sick 
Yes, because I'm sick of the feeling. I got sick of the feeling. I picked up a bug somewhere. I don't know if it's on the plane. I don't know if it's at a restaurant. I don't know. But I'm feeling much better today. Yesterday was a good day for me too. You know? Yeah. So we give God honor. Whenever you don't see me, I say this all the time. Pray for me. Yeah, I picked up a nasty bug and I was down for a couple of days. Friday morning, I went live and that was it. That was it. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was it. No food, no drinks, nothing. I can't eat anything. Nothing at all. Uh -uh, nothing. So the last meal I had was Friday morning and it was breakfast. Ever since then, I've been down. Hallelujah. I only come out this morning because I want you all to know that I am alive. I am doing well. <laughs> and God is here with us. It is well. Tell somebody it is well. It is well. You know, sometimes you have to push. Yeah. Sometimes you have to push. Mm-hmm. I think William William Shakespeare said one touch of nature and the whole world become family so this means that when you good morning Miami hallelujah when you keep it real people will cling to you because not because they like you but it's because of your truth whatever you are doing speak the truth whatever whatever you are doing don't even take allow someone to pay you to lie no whatever you're doing speak the truth speak your truth this is one of the reasons why jesus christ was betrayed and slaughtered because he spoke the truth he called them hypocrites why because he ministered to them and the same people that he ministered to were the same people who sold him out, who led him to his early grave. Even though it was a prophetic word, it had to come to pass. But I'm saying this, it was no stranger that betrayed Jesus Christ. So I'm here to let you know, he, he was in that situation because he spoke his truth. Speak the truth. I'm here today because I have decided to speak the truth. I remember years ago when I started preaching in church, and I was giving short testimonies and saying little bitty stuff, you know, about my past. And one night I went to bed and the Lord said to me, you need to tell people the truth. You need to testify. Let them know who you are. I said, Lord, he said, don't hide it anymore. You cannot, you cannot work for me under cover. So I had to come out and tell the world about my past. If you're just joining for the first time, go to my page. Yeah. The day when I became a doctor in theology, after I finished my doctoral studies, the Lord told me that don't post any picture unless you're going to speak the truth. So I had to go up there and spoke of my past, how I was molested by men and women and the life that I lived and the things that I've gone through. I begin to speak my truth and then the anointing begin to change my life begin to change the Spirit of the Lord is with me more than ever you know so I'm just here to say this I thank God that I, I, I received the opportunity to live my truth I don't have any shame <laughs> you know Back when we were young, we would say, you don't have no shame. And it seemed to be a bad thing. But I have no shame. I can walk up on any podium and tell people what happened to me. That's my truth. It doesn't matter who did it to me. It happened. So I'm here today to let you know, unless you're going to speak the truth, be quiet. The Lord told me that. He said, you have been preaching and prophesying. And yet you are not speaking the truth. 
So when I put on that robe and did those fo that photo shoot, he said, unless you're going to speak the truth, don't post that picture. So under the picture, under that picture, if you go on my platform and you look on my Facebook page, you will see that picture with me in that doctoral robe speaking my truth. And that day I was free. Let us pray. I don't care who you are. And it doesn't matter what you have gone through. You had to go through that to be here today. Amen. Let us pray. Whatever happened in your past, it does not define your future. So stop hiding. Stop sugarcoating stuff. Stop lying to yourself. You're not lying to anyone. You're lying to yourself. If you're used to thief, don't don't do it anymore. Just say, listen, I once was a thief and I'm done. Jesus was, was right there between two thieves. I'm here to let you know. Speak your truth. It's not who you are today. The Lord has changed your story. Tell people about the things that... You see, when you share your testimony, it will help someone because you're not the only person who went through that. So be honest. Be honest. Somebody may be here for healing and deliverance. And until you speak your truth, they will not receive their healing because you are hiding the truth. Hallelujah. It's not about looks. God business is not about how you look. It's what's coming from your heart. The truth. Any day you can't speak the truth, it means that you have not been delivered and set free from your past. And this morning I just came to encourage you. Speak the truth. It doesn't matter how difficult it seems. The day I found out that I don't have to lie anymore. I got wings to fly. Speak the truth. Someone may be waiting on you. It could be a friend that has gone through the same thing that you have gone through. But because you refuse to speak the truth, they are not being delivered. Some people are waiting for your testimony. Don't sugarcoat it. I didn't come to social media to make friends because I'm not friendly. I'm not the nicest person in the world. But if you knew me, if you get a chance to meet me personally, you might like me because of the truth. But that's as, that's as far as it will go. I'm very boring. So let us pray. Father, we just want to say thank you for the truth. Jesus Christ himself said it. And they shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Today, Lord, we thank you that we were able to be here one more time to fellowship in your name, Jesus Christ. Lord, you said when we are gathered like this in your name, you are in the midst. And we just want to thank you, Spirit of the living God. Anyone here today that need a breakthrough, Lord, remember them. You know their heart. Lord, give them strength to be bold and speak the truth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And as we are getting ready to do our fasting next week. No sugar. No added sugar. Give us strength Lord God to pursue and continue. To devour and to conquer. To divide your word. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. You said we should not be ashamed. We should rightly divide the word of truth. We are workmen in the vineyard. And Lord, we ask you to continue to strengthen us as we work in your vineyard. You said when we work for you, you will pay us what we deserve. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for El Shaddai. Thank you for how far we have come. Thank you for where we are today. Lord, we just want to bless your holy name. We just want to lift your name on high. You are exalted. You are lifted up right now. And we want to give you honor and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even now I cover myself in the blood. I cover myself in your precious blood. Use me to your glory. Put my flesh under subjection. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Sweet Holy Spirit. And let your will be done. Our covenant keeper, we look to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Now, welcome all and happy Monday. I encourage you to share this message as you join. I'm outdoor. I'm outside. And it's nice and windy. Amen. I'm, yeah. I'm just taking some tea and stuff that will help me with this allergy. It left me with a cold, so I knew I was... I, I picked up a bug for the last couple of days. I can't eat anything. I can't drink anything unless it's just water with peppermint added to it. Yeah. So today, you know, I found myself some dandelion tea in the kitchen. And I'm having it. It is well. If you're here and you're sick in your body, I pray healing in your life. Yeah. <laughs> I thank God I'm here. Believe me, at one point I felt like I was poisoned. Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like I was poisoned. And I began to pray against food poisoning in my body. Yeah. Amen. I know you can hear it by the sound of my voice, but everything came out. It all came out. My system released everything that was there. Hallelujah. And you see, the, the devil is wicked. As soon as I got home, about to turn into my yard, I got a flat tire. And I know this is the plan of the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's the plan of the enemy. That is, that's his plan. He gets, the devil gets a high from making your life miserable. So when you find that you're arguing and you're angry about things, brush it off. It's not of God. The Bible said, don't let anger destroy you. Anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Amen? Anger rests. I saw my son over the weekend. He came to visit me. And um, at the hotel that I'm staying. And he's so angry. And I remember when I was just like that. Listen to me. Because he kind of looked like me. So I'm looking at him and I said, no, you can't do this. Don't allow this to happen. Anger will destroy you. That is the devil's playground. When you get angry, you, get, you tend to say things that will make other people sad, you know. Yeah, Solomon said it. He said, anger rests in the bosom of a fool. This morning, I want to come to you from the book of Ruth. And uh, we all know the story of Ruth. Ruth was married to Nehomi's son. Nehomi have two sons. And um, they moved to Moab where there was bread. There was a famine. And her husband and herself moved to Moab where there was food you know you have a little bit of money and things get tough like the recession is coming so people are looking for another place to stay where life is kind of less difficult so they moved to a place but the land that they moved to was cursed I'm talking Bible and when they moved there the first thing happened the woman husband died Naomi Naomi husband died and after he died her sons were married one is called Marlon, and the other one is Chilon. Chilon or Chilion. They were married. One was married to Naomi, and one was married to... One was married to Oprah, and one was married to Ruth. I'm not looking in the Bible. It's in my lap. I'm just re, yeah, reiterating the scriptures. So the man's name was Emilek. Yes, Elimelech. Naomi's husband. He died first. The Bible did not tell us what killed them if they were sick, if they if they had issues. No, they just died. And Oprah's husband died. Ruth's husband died. So the woman, two sons died and her husband. She said, I'm going back home. I, I'm not staying here. I don't have any money. And these two young women my sons were married to them and my sons died. I can't take care of them. I can't feed them. So let me just leave this place. You said, I'm going home. 
and they wanted to go with her. She said no. She talked them not to come. Oprah wasn't that strong. She listened to Naomi, but Ruth said, no, I'm not leaving you. I'm coming with you. I'm coming. She said, I'm, I'm telling you guys, go back home. They said, no, we're not. But then she keep on insisting that they should leave. So Oprah left and turned back. Miss Ruth, <laughs> Miss Ruth said, I'm coming with you. She said, no, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should have, I hope, and I have an husband, to a night, then I should be your son. I guess back in those days, women never took nine months to give birth because of the way she speak. She said, if I should have an husband also tonight and should also be your sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? <laughs> this is what Naomi said to the girls. And, and, you know, she persuaded them to leave her. And they lift up their voice and they cried. Oprah kissed Naomi and she went, she turned and leave. Ruth cleaved, the Bible said in the, in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, the Bible said Ruth cleaved. Verse, verse uh, 14 said, they Oprah kissed her, but, but, Oprah kissed her, but Ruth cleaved unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods, because back in those days they worship idols. In the country of Moab, I talk about this all the time, Job, two daughters got pregnant by Job. They drunk him and they got pregnant. So the kids that they had were Moabites and yes, part of them were Moabites. And the story goes on to say, she said, now return after thy sister-in-law. And the woman said, entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. I'm going to stop right there, because this, this right here is just verse 16. And there are so many things you can find from this. Some young women don't like their mother-in-law. They don't. Some mother-in-law don't like their daughter-in-law. It's true. And I can continue onward because now the woman have decided to go back. One decided to go back to her people and the other one decided to stay with her mother-in-law. She said, well, I already accept you as my mother-in-law, but I'm not staying in this wicked place. This is an evil place and I'm not staying here. I'd rather to come with you wherever you go because there is there was something about Naomi that Ruth found that Oprah didn't find. Naomi was a Christian. Ruth found Jesus Christ in Naomi. Remember what Naomi said, go back to your gods. She wasn't cursing them, but the word gods, capital G-O-D-S, meaning that they were idol worshippers, and that's what happened. The Bible never said Naomi husband was an idol worshipper. It said he went there to get bread. But sometimes we think about getting food in places that are make life in an ungodly place. God did not bless Naomi in an ungodly place. No. She lost her husband and children. And now she decided to go back home because she found out that now there is bread back home. The, 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 the recession ended. Back then they call it famine. The recession ended. So Ruth stayed with her and trod along with her mother-in-law. When they went back home, she was ashamed. 
When they get to Bethlehem, the Bible said when they get to Bethlehem, it came to pass that when people came and, you know, to say hi to Naomi, she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Because I lost everything. I'm broke. I have entered into a curse. I'm, I'm coming to you this morning with Bible. So if you're here for the first time, just stay with me. I want you to know that you can come from a bad place and still do good in a foreign country. Your past does not define you. And I say it because this is one of the things that the Lord told me about myself. My past don't define me. The bad things that I've gone through, I'm not doing it anymore. God cleaned me up. Long time. So you don't have to allow your past to haunt you. According here to the word of God. The Bible tells us. That the woman was ashamed when she went back to her land. She was broke. And she was broken. She was broke and she was broken. God wants us to come to him broken. Amen. Sometimes we allow the men to make certain decisions and they lead us wrong. Her husband did not have spiritual eyes. That's why he went to that place. So he lost his life. Mm -hmm. He lost his life. Now, let us look at verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 2. It says, And Ruth the Moabite said to Nehomi, let me go. Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go my daughter. Now you see, she is more of a daughter now than a daughter-in-law because her son died and, he, and the woman stayed. She said, I'll take care of you, Naomi. You don't have to worry. You're old, but I'm here for you. I was married to your son. He was good to me. So you don't have to worry about anything. I'm not going back to that place. So I'm stuck with you. And we will live in this. We are in this together. We are in this together. Somebody said we are in this together. People have got to hear this. I get to understand that. This thing is supposed to be legal all over the world. When someone has a farm. It doesn't matter what they, what they plant. But when they are reaping the crop, they are supposed to leave some by the wayside for poor people to pick it up. Yes. So Ruth didn't have anything. Naomi didn't have anything. I guess they went back to the old house that they were living in. They owned the house. So the house is still there. And she said, let me go and glean. It was legit for her to glean, to go to the farm down the street and pick up stuff and put it in her lap. It, it, they don't arrest you for stuff like that. It's not considered to be stealing. This is something that people do and should do when they are in business with these things. Leave enough at the side for poor people to eat, to pick up and eat. Amen. So Naomi asks permission from her mother. Ruth asks permission from Naomi, her mother. Can I go and glean? She said, go my daughter. So it means now she become a gleaner. She's gleaning. She's picking up stuff from the side. Not from the roadside, from the farm. From the fields. The Bible said... And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. So when the people reap, they get paid to reap. But they still had to leave some for somebody to glean. Hallelujah. Jesus. So according to the word of God, the Bible said, And her hap was to light in part of the field belonging to Boaz. Who was the kindred of Elimelech? Who was Elimelech? Elimelech was Ruth's father-in-law. So this man Boaz owned the property. And he is related to her, to her ex-husband. 
Anybody get it? So now she's in the family. She's still in the family. The Bible said, when Boaz saw Ruth gleaning, he began to ask, who is this young woman? The Bible said, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord bless thee. So these people were believers of God. Then Boaz said unto the servant, that was set over the reapers. So he have the supervisor working. He said, whose damsel is this? He saw the young woman gleaning. He want to know who the woman is. And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, it is the Moabitish. Hello. The supervisor turned to the boss man and said, It is the Moabitish that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you. So he is telling the owner the story of the young woman. He said, this is what Ruth he is repeating after what Ruth said to Naomi. So I guess the thing became known to the whole community. It's not a big place. I've never gone. To, I've not gone to Bethlehem yet, but I've done a lot of my research and my writings and my findings to find out that Bethlehem was not. It's not a big place. So everybody knows everybody there. Amen. And. He's saying she came with him with her. She said, Let me glean and gather the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and had continued even from the morning until now. So she got so much. The Bible is telling us that that she tarried a little in the house. So she even went to their house where the servants work. She went there. Maybe she get went there to get drinks or water. The Bible said, then Boaz said unto the, to the, to Re, then Boaz said unto Ruth, hearest thou my daughter. So that mean, if he's calling her daughter, he was an old man. Anybody here with me this morning? People of God, I want you to pay attention to this message. I'm going through the scriptures. I'm teaching a little bit. But there is a moral to this story. I want you to pay attention. Boaz is calling her daughter, mean that he could be her father. He said, go, go not to glean in another field, neither from hence, but abide here fast by my maiden. He was telling her, don't go to anybody else's field to glean. Stay in his field. He fell in love with her right away. If you are here and you're single, may you receive grace to find your husband. Jesus. May the Lord direct you to your husband. Oh, Jesus. The man could be the woman's father. Now he's showing her favor. May the Lord show you favor. May the Lord favor you in this time in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Boaz went to the woman personally she's a foreigner she's a Moabitish it means that she's come from a wicked place and it did not bother him one bit many of us we begin to judge people soon as we know something about their past hey oh God Many of us, we begin to judge people soon as we hear where they're from. Mighty God, may the Lord set you free today. Many of you, they judge you because of the family that you are from. Many of you, they judge you because of the Lord Jesus. Because somebody died from your life. Oh, Kotaba Hey! Hallelujah! Mighty God. Because of the family that you came from, many people will cut you off. 
They only want to hear you're from such a place. They don't have nothing to do with you. May the Lord bless you here today. Many of you, even your own family will cut you off. Because of the way you look. Because of what you achieve in life. Because of the kind of people that God blessed you in your life with. They will begin to show a lot of jealousy. This, 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 root, this book of root here is very powerful. Remember the Bible said when Boaz went to the, the workplace, the, the job site. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vineyard, but it's also the job site. And he said to these people that work for him, the Lord bless you. So he greet them with a holy greetings. And they turned to him and said, the Lord bless thee. So he was a good boss. Oh, Jesus. If you are here and you're a business person, may the Lord bless you in your business. May the Lord favor you in your business. Glory to God. He was a good boss. He spoke well to his servants. They respected him. If you have people working for you that don't respect you, they won't show it. They'll steal from you. They'll lie to you. They, Oh God. Let's go deeper into the word. Now, remember, he said, who is this? And they told him that the woman is from a dirty place with bad reputation that was married to somebody from your family. Abimelech is related to Boaz. Boaz is an old man. Because he called the girl his daughter. That right there lets you know that this is how much he respected her. He didn't look at her as a girlfriend. He looked at her as a daughter under him. Not as a girlfriend. You might be here and God is getting ready to show you favor. Wait on the Lord. Ruth did not know that this man was going to be her husband. Ruth was the one who gave birth to David's grandfather, Obed. Is anybody here? Is anybody with me? It's time for people to stop judging you because of your past. And if you are struggling to find husband, if you are a woman here and you're struggling to find husband, you need to repent from the things that happened in your past. You know why I'm saying this? Remember, Ruth told Naomi, I'm not going back to Moab. God is with you, Naomi, and I want to stay with you and, and deal with this God that you have. I want this God that you have. So right then and there, she denounced Moab. She left Moab. She's not going back to Moab. No. She wanted to be clean. She wanted to stay clean. She wanted a better life. When Ruth said, when Naomi said, go back to your gods, she said, no, I want the God that you have. Because all that they worship in Moab was false God, idol worshiping, all kind of stuff. And now, the man showed up and he got interested in the woman. And when he heard who she was, he said, look, don't go to anybody else's field. You can come here every day and get everything you need. May the Lord bless you with all that you need in this time. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He said to her, Hearest thou my daughter? Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in, any, in another field, neither from hence. That means don't leave from here. Stay here. He said, But abide here fast by my maiden. So he wanted her to stay with his maidens. He have a lot of people working under him. And Ruth find favor. May you find favor today. In your superiors. My God. May you find favor today in your superiors. Boaz gave out specific instructions. He said, let thine eyes be on the field that, that do reap. That they do reap. And go thou after them. I have not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee. 
So he already tell the men that work for him, don't touch that woman. May the Lord protect you. Hey, Jesus. May the Lord protect you here today. Boaz, the boss, told the men that work for him, don't touch this woman. The Bible said, young men, it meant that Boaz was an old man. He, he, his age keep popping up in different sentences indirectly. It says, go not after them. I have not charged, have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. So now they are working for Ruth. Ruth went there just to pick up corn. It says corn. So it was a corn field. Jesus. Mighty God. Today I came to tell you. May you find grace in the eyes of your superior. May the Lord show you favor wherever you work, wherever you look for bread. May the Lord show you favor. May the Lord show you favor wherever you go, wherever you work, whatever you're doing. Could somebody go ahead and share this message? After all this conversation that Boaz had with Ruth, you know what the Bible tells us? Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes? That thou should take thou should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. You see, this is the problem we have. We are so familiar with getting the people that we love and care for to do things for us. But God is saying today, he is going to use a stranger to bless you. She was a foreigner. She came from a different country. And the word country here makes her a foreigner. Hello, somebody. The word country in the Bible makes her a foreigner so now she's showing her respect she went on her face she said why me why did you choose me i'm a young girl i'm a widow my husband died i'm just here to pick up a few corn and you know enjoy a little meal i can bring stuff back so Naomi can eat why Right then and there, in that place that she worked, she was about to receive favor. Favor with God and favor with man. What is the moral of this story? Boaz answered the woman. And he said to her, I have fully been showed, it had fully been showed me. So he's saying somebody showed it to him. You know, King James Bible, it speak backwards sometimes. He said, it had fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband. So Boaz did her background check. And he found out that this girl is a good girl. She's a clean girl. He said, And how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of, the nat of thy nativity, meaning that she leave her homeland and come with her mother-in-law and come unto a people which thou knewest not here for. Here to four, meaning that you have never been here before. So you see, when you study King James, sometimes it makes you feel like you can't read. But here the word here to four, meaning that you have never been here before. So she come with her mother-in-law and she's there hustling in a strange land. Many of us, we don't want to do anything. We want everything to be laid out in front of us. But the young woman is a stranger. 
she came to this place and when she came to this place now she's going around picking up leftovers to bring home and right then and there god opened doors naomi did not know that this was going to happen because the man is related to naomi husband hello somebody god will always make a way where there seemed to be no way you might be working at this little deadbeat job and you're looking to see why these people can't stand you god is getting ready to use those people to bless you yes hallelujah thank you holy spirit the man said i see and i heard what you have done but before it ends he said the lord recompense thy work hello boaz was heavily anointed he was in the spirit he said to ruth the lord recompense thy work and the full reward be given thee of the lord god of israel under whose wings thou art come to trust hallelujah jesus boaz he said to the young girl jesus he said the lord recompense thy work and the reward and a full reward given thee of the lord god of israel under those under whose wings thou art come to trust you might be where you are and you're saying that lord these people are so ungrateful they don't acknowledge me because of what i do but i'm just gonna keep pushing for you lord god is saying i'm getting ready to recompense you god is saying i'm getting ready to bless you god is saying here today if you are a part of el shaddai prayer tower and you have been paying your tithes and you have been sowing seeds in the ministry he is getting ready to elevate you you might belong to another ministry but you are here to heed the word and feed upon it god is saying i am getting somebody said this oh jesus this message has a very special meaning to me right now god is preparing a place for me designed to meet hallelujah god is gonna use stranger to bless you many of you are looking for family to bless you it won't happen this morning when i was getting dressed i i i, I was praying in my spirit and i said lord what is going on with me no family members when i say family members i'm talking close bloodline they don't care for me they don't regard me doing the work of god the lord said i'm not gonna bless you among them that's why i move you from among all of them so i'm here to let you know god is getting ready to bless you among strangers not among the people that that you tell everything no here Boaz told Ruth why. Why? Ruth said, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou should take knowledge of me? What she's saying, Why did you acknowledge me? And what Boaz said, He said, The Lord recompense thy work. What was the work? She was taking care of the old woman. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She was taking care of her old woman who she didn't have to take care of. The woman said, go back. She said, no, I'm coming. So many of you, you have been working for free. God is getting ready to pay you. God is getting ready to reward you of your good deeds. Stop complaining. Hallelujah. Stop complaining. God is getting ready to bless you among strangers. You might be looking for the people that you're related to to bless you because they might have a few shillings. I'm going to use the word shillings. God is getting ready to give you pounds. Oh, Jesus. Maybe you're among family members who have more than you do. And you think that's where the blessing is coming from. No. God said no. Because of your labor. 
of love for me. I'm going to open big doors for you. So, according to the word of God, the woman went home and told her mother everything that took place. So now, Naomi had to tell Ruth what to do. Yes. Naomi have to now tell Ruth, Ruth, you're going to have to fix up yourself. The man like you. The way he talks to you. In our tradition, we deal with people like that when we really care for them. So now the thing become a culture. So Ruth have to know now how to adorn herself accordingly. Because Boaz was not just, was not just any man. He was a big man with big plans. And he loved God. Remember how that came out of his mouth the whole time was he was talking about the Lord. So he was a believer. Oh Jesus. I don't know what you're going through here today. But God is getting ready to change your story. I don't know your situation. But God is getting ready to bless you among strangers. The same way he's blessing me among strangers. I'm not among family and friends. All the people that I have known in Connecticut. Are people that I met in church. Through ministry. Everyone. So I'm here to talk to you today. Personally. Get closer to God. Yes church people are hypocrites. We know. But it's not your job to judge them. It's not your job to judge anybody. Many times the reason why you don't make it to a point. Is because you are waiting for family. Family is foolishness. In many ways. Your own family is the one that will turn you over to the devil. To the enemy which is the devil. Your family is the first one to bad mouth you. Jesus. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Family is the first one to say. Oh she. Hey. But I came to tell you that the devil is a liar. God is going to bless you among strangers. You don't need family to be blessed. If they hurt you, just forgive them and move on. My God. When family members hurt you, forgive them and move on. Because they continue to be bitter. Family stay bitter. You can't change family. So just pray, let it go, and move on. Now, the man, after the man told the woman all these things, she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord. For thou hast comforted me. And for that thou hast spoken friendly unto me, thine handmaid. Though I be not like unto one of thine handmaids. So she never looked good. She was not the best girl in town. What she's saying to him is that the women that work for you look better than me. Let me find favor in your sight. I'm stuffy. I still have a little bit of cold left in me. It's coming out. But I'm going to say, Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. Across the hottest desert, I travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything. She called him my Lord. Anybody remember Sarah? When Sarah was talking to her husband Abraham, she called him my Lord. So you see, it's a form of respect unto husbands. She didn't say my God. She said my Lord. The word Lord meaning, she acknowledged him. 
she acknowledged him as a man over her. Hallelujah. Here the word of God is telling us. She said she won. She said, then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me. For thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid. Though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. So she was telling him right out that I didn't get my hair done. I didn't get my makeup done. I didn't get a pedicure or a manicure. I don't dress well, but let me find favor. No, she was putting it out there. She, she grabbed life by the horn. She was using every opportunity she get. She was using her moment of fame. Jesus. Many of us, you only remember to be nice after the moment ended. She was in the moment. She was taking it straight. She was, oh God, remember she was once married. So she know how to catch a man. I'm going to use in the word catch a man. She knew how to, to grab a man. To hold on to a man. She know how to massacre a man. She know how to. Hold him under her arm. Hello, somebody. This is the problem many of us have. We are too extra. We don't know how to grab a man. With words. With words. The Bible said, let your words be sweet. Seasoned with salt. So it will tingle in his ears. Many of you women, you do not know how to speak to a man. You are so rough. You don't have a little bit of charm. No, there's no salt in your words. My God. R Ruth was ready. The moment arrived. And she did not hesitate. She did not hesitate. She, she was seasoned. Because remember, her husband died. So she was longing for affection. And she was longing for all those things. Remember, the man said, my daughter. And now she's saying, my Lord. Now she's claiming her rightful position. She found out that the man was single. The way the man approached her. The man told the men that worked for him that don't touch this young one. Don't touch this one. It means that those young men there were sharp. They were hot. They were hot-blooded. So Boaz gave them specific instruction. Touch anybody who you want to touch, but don't touch Ruth. Somebody said, don't touch Ruth. No. No. Boaz told her all these things. And she said, let me find favor in thy sight. You speak to me friendly, even though I'm not worthy. Oh, God. We are reading Bible people of God. The words of God, they are sweet. The Bible tells us, Then Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, come, come for dinner. Boaz said to Ruth, You know what? I'm inviting you for dinner. You are invited to dinner. I want to know you. I want to know you some more. You seem to be an interesting person. I want to get to really, really know you. I won't place anyone above you. I want to really chit-chat with you a little bit. Let's do it over some meal. Yes, this is what he was saying to her. He said, at mealtime, come thou hither. And eat of bread and dip thy morsel in thy vinegar. And she, oh, and she sat beside the reapers and reached, and reached her parched corn, and she did eat, was sufficed and left. Hello. Now you see. The Lord want to bless us. But because of our inability to have constructive conversation. God is sending divine protection. But it's up to you and your behavior. Maybe you're stuck in the past. You're still rough around the edges. May the Lord bless you. Jesus. May the Lord bless you here today. 
The Bible said, And when she came again to glean, they did not reproach her. And Boaz began to tell them, he said, left some handful of, of this for her and leave them that she may glean and rebuke her not. So even though he liked her, he was not rushing. You see, just take your time. Take your time. Take your time in whatever you're doing. The Bible reminds us that she gleaned, she gleaned, she gleaned. And Ruth went home and told Naomi the story. And Naomi begin to tell her, no, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to bathe. Take shower. Take regular shower. In chapter 3, the Bible tells us, Naomi said, my daughter. Hallelujah. He says, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And no. And no. Is not Boaz our kindred, whose maidens thou was? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Wash thyself, therefore. So the man had many, many, many fields. So now they're going to do barley. So Naomi said, take a shower. Fix up yourself and tonight go. Put on raiment and get thee down to the floor and make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lay down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie and shall go in and uncover his feet and lay there. Hello, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. So this was the sign in Israel in those days, what women do. To keep a man, you have to be nice. And this is why we pray that God will send the right man. But some a whole lot of things happened when Boaz found out that the woman was ready to move forward he had to pay for her so now she moved from being a gleaner to the owner of the field yes she was no longer gleaning she was a owner she became wife to the man who owned the fields. So you see, when you wait on the Lord, he will give you strength. Hallelujah. When you wait on the Lord, I'm going to read one last verse before I go. When you wait on the Lord, according to the word of God, the Bible said, Boaz redeemed land and root. Land and root. <laughs> Boaz had to go to the elders because he was old and there were a lot of young men, prominent husband, young men that would marry her. So he had to, and there were men there that liked her. So Boaz took it to the next level. The Bible said, and Boaz said unto the elders and unto the, all the people that are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was in Emilek's and all that was Chileans and Marlins of the hand of Naomi. So I guess when they moved to Moab, Boaz was the one who bought all the land. Hey. Let's go deeper. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabite, the wife of Marlon, have I purchased to be my wife. Boaz didn't marry her to have kids for himself. He married her to have kids for Marlon because Marlon died. Anybody remember Judah? His boys died. They didn't want to have kids for each other. So God killed them. 
So Boaz was serious about God's business. I'm going to read this so you can get a clear understanding. The Bible tells us, it says, Moreover, Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Marlon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place you are witnesses this day and all the people that were in the gate because it was a meeting held by all the leaders of the land and all the people of the gate and the elders that were witnesses the lord make the woman that is come into thine house like rachel and like leah which two that build the house of Israel and do thou worthily in Ephrata be famous in Bethlehem. And they and let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh's whom Tamar bear unto Judah. <laughs> the seed which the Lord shall give thee of is of this young woman. So she moved from being a gleaner unto our owner the bible talk about the man she was with he died her husband and god gave her another husband you might be here god is getting ready to give you a second chance god don't lie he's getting ready to give you a second chance today i'm here to let you know wait on the lord Ruth could have stayed back in Moab and find a young man to marry. But remember, the Bible tells us that the man who bought the land that belonged to her husband and her father-in-law, that was the man she married. So she got all her possessions back. Everything that was taken from them. It could have been a different man. It could have been a different man, but the man bought the land he was related to her husband. So now, Ruth didn't really lose anything. Today you are here and you're waiting on God to do it for you. And you're wondering what's taking so long. Just continue to wait. Maybe you're in a place where you don't belong. Because that's where your family, all your family stay. And you're saying, this is the family property and I'm staying here. God is saying, I'm getting ready to bless you in a land of strangers. God is getting ready to bless you in a place where strangers, only strangers are. Many of you, you like to be with family because it is the curse of the family that keep you in bondage. Yes, it's a curse. Keep you in bandage. Under pay you. They, they put you to work. They don't even pay you. I remember back in the days I was in Florida among some of my father's siblings. And they were using me to do jobs that pays a lot of money and give me a little bit. And the day God opened my eyes, I never looked back. I forgive them, but I never looked back. They didn't treat me with any form of respect because you see i'm here to say this to you people of god many of them are even watching me but it's my truth and i say this to you if people don't like your parents they're not going to like you if they don't like you they're not going to like your children some people act like they like you because you're related to them it's a lie somebody will say uh i didn't get along with my brother but i like my niece that's a lie they're trying to hurt you if they don't like you they're not going to like your children wise up wise up if they don't like you they're not going to like your children if they didn't like your parents they're not going to like you they'll act like they like you to hurt you be careful many of the times this is what we do we stuck up under them because they're related to us they didn't like my mama, so I know they're not going to like me. They didn't like my daddy, so I know for sure they're not going to like me. They didn't like me, so I know they're not going to like my children. So I don't force my children into family. And if you're here and you're doing it, stop it. 
Many of you, you know your family is wicked. Stop forcing your... Everybody know I speak without apology. Y'all know I don't sugarcoat the word of God. Somebody said this is facts. Of course. If you didn't get along well with your brother and your sister when you were young, notice the way they treat your children. They, will, they refuse to speak to you, but they want to draw your children close. They're trying to hurt them. Don't be, a, don't, 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 don't be clouded. May the Lord open your eyes. Now look what happened to Naomi. Her husband took them to Moab and she lost everything. Who bought her land? Her husband family. So God allowed Ruth to come back so Naomi could own something. It meant that they were well off. They were well off. So today I pray, Ruth became a gleaner. And after she became a gleaner, she became an owner of the same property that she was gleaning from. She owned everything. She owned everything. Today, I don't know what you're going through. Sister Jolene, you are in my spirit and I went to bed and I had a dream about you. And I'm going to say right here. I, I couldn't tell the place. I don't know where the place was. But I had a dream that I was at a place. And you came and told me that. The people that you're working for, because you're not qualified, let me say it. The people that you're working for, they're helping you to get a place next to where I am. In the dream, I begin to prophesy to you that you're going to come. But because it's somebody who get it for you, you're not going to stay there. The Lord is going to bless you with your own house. My God. Where I am in the dream... That somebody is helping you to be there but the person that's helping you to be there the Lord used me to tell you in the dream that he is going to give you a home I pray today that this will settle in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the Lord will do it for you and it was so real in the dream because I was painting the place. I was fixing it up. Like I just moved there. Nice. I don't know what it was because there were no furnitures. It was just a place. I don't know. And people were there like renovating and doing all different kinds of stuff. Good morning and welcome if you're just joining. But in the dream, someone got it for you. And when you got there, Pastor, it is the truth. Lord have mercy. I don't know what I'm saying. It was just a dream. It was just a dream at last night. That's the dream I had. And in, it was so funny because in the dream, I begin to prophesy to you that, yes, they got this for you, but you're going to move like next door. And when you move next door, it will be yours. But today I pray. That whatever God show me in that dream, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is done. Amen. It was a dream. So, you know, I pray that whatever your need and desire of the Lord, he will bless you. Oh, you say where you are, somebody got it for you? I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that. That was a dream. It's a dream, Sister Julian. I went to bed and that's what I saw in the dream. That the place... Oh, Jesus. So you're going to move again. Yes, because in the dream, the Lord began to prophesy to me. Because I'm there fixing up the place and you came. I'm like, what are you doing here? You said, somebody got me this place. And the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord took over and I began to share it with you. I said, you know what, you're going to, the Lord said, I should tell you that you're going to move again. And it will be well because you're going to move into your own home. 
Amen. Glory to God. I solidify this right here. I did not know that, but it is well. I have been praying for the Lord to change my story with a house to call my own. It is, it's coming because I had that dream. So it's coming. Oh, Jesus. I, I just thank God for the prophetic that's upon this ministry. People of God, listen. Pretty soon we will start having service. I think for the 27th, I think for the 27th, we will have service in Connecticut to a location to be announced. We're going to have to rent a place to have service. But for that time, I'm, I'm supposed to go there, but I'm having some car problems. So I'm not going to get to do it until maybe another day. So I will. I will give you the information. We will have service in Connecticut. So wherever you are, you can come down for service on the 27th of November. I'm going to do my best. It's expensive, but I'm going to do my best. We need to have service. Even if I'm going to be there by myself, just me and Brother Devon, we will have service. Amen? So you are invited to church, Sister Babette. I know you are in Connecticut, Sister Sophia. I know you are in Connecticut. And for all of you that are in Connecticut and New York and New Jersey, I'm inviting you to church in Connecticut on the 27th of November. And the day, and many of you that are visitors, some people show up for Thanksgiving, I'm inviting you to church. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I'm just grateful for the things that the Lord is doing. It is well. Yes, it is well. How mighty God. It is well. It is well. We give God honor and praise. I'm looking for all the people in New York and Connecticut to come out to church. It will be well. Amen. And I am excited. I am excited. I want you to know you might have been going through a lot, but humble yourself and continue to glean in the field. God is getting ready for you to own that field. Sister Keisha, you said you will bring, if when you're coming, take Sister Lorraine with you. She'll get the day off. <laughs> I'm looking forward, um, you know, to meet some of you. So we are doing our best to have service. We are going to rent a place. It's pretty expensive, but by the grace of God, we'll get in there and um, God will do the rest. Amen. Once again, I just want to say this. There's an announcement to make and we can't make it until we are. Um, it's not yet. So there are so many things coming up for the ministry. I want you to know that so many things coming up for the ministry that you need to be a part of. For those of you that are members of this ministry, I invite you to participate. Amen. God is truly amazing. I'm not feeling so strong today. So I'm going to leave the rest until another day. I think I have given you enough information, but get ready to come to church. That's all I can say. And for those of you that are in Jamaica, get ready to come to church. For those of you that are in Jamaica, get ready to come to church. And don't tell me that it's far. Because to fly to Jamaica and to go to church, it's already far. So get ready to come to church. People are flying from New York to go to Jamaica to church. People are flying from America to go to Africa to church. People are flying all over the world just to go to church. Yet when we are having service, people are saying it's far. Stop it. Yes. You see, we make we make it our business to fly from afar to go to somebody's funeral. But we won't fly so far to go and praise God with them. We make it our business to fly to go far to somebody's wedding and their anniversary and their birthday parties. And this is why I don't have parties. 
because people put a lot of effort in spending a lot of money to do those things yes to dress up and to be seen it is well it is well you know the other day i was reading an article and somebody was saying that church goers support people that goes to church they support celebrities but people who are from the kingdom of god they support the anointing the people from yes the ones that just go to church they don't know the word they just visit church they support celebrity pastors yes but the ones that will support the anointing the anointing that you carry they celebrate you they don't celebrate they don't sell yes kingdom builders celebrate anointing church go and celebrate <laughs> it's true it is true so people have got listen celebrate what god is doing in el Shaddai. i encourage you to be obedient and if you are from a different ministry and want to partner with us in giving the number is 860-634-8557. I can't even speak fast today. If you are not a member of a church and you would like to join El Shaddai Prayer Tower, you can send us a message on WhatsApp at 860-634-8557. Yes. So, um... You can use Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App if the Lord touch your heart to bless the ministry. If you are led. The other day, I received a text message from someone that was very sick and came to this platform and got healing. And they sent me a message said, Pastor, I am led to sow in the ministry. The Lord touched my heart. Please send me the information. And it touched me. Because I've never heard from this person a long time. And I said, Lord, you got to, this is you. Yeah, it's a man. He sent me a message. He said, Pastor, I am led to sow. Could you please send me the information to sow in the ministry? The number is 860-634-8557. So if the Lord touch your heart, <coughs> if you are led to sow, that's the number and it's Zelle, PayPal or Cash App. Yeah. We give God honor and praise. Look at what ha look at what just took place. The young woman was with her mother in law. They didn't have anything. She just went out to look food, to hustle. I call it hustle. She was hustling. And that's how she met her husband. He didn't judge her because she came from a bad place. No. He, he got interested. Come to find out, he purchased their own land. So he said, now look, I'm going to have children with you and the children are for your husband. So you see, the, the, the lineage continued. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Once again. Amen. Once again, my time is up. I have to go. Have yourself a blessed day while I'm here taking care of myself and resting i want you to know it is well whatever you're going through it is well amen <laughs>